to install WZA version 8 you need to go to the specific directory relative to the uh, operating system you're installing on and to then select either the launchpad or the launchpad 64 if you're installing on 64-bit. Um, I'm installing on Windows and I've copied the, uh, the installation files onto my hard drive um, rather than running them off of a, a DVD um, and I've got a 64-bit installation so I'm going to start the uh, launchpad 64 application. So double click on the launchpad 64 application once that comes up you should see the um, the actual launchpad application from here you can select to install either an evaluation install um, which is a very simple install but for a, um, a production or a development and test system that you're going to use then uh, you should actually you should not use the evaluation install so we can select the custom install to do all of this when you select custom install you can choose to install on an existing web server application server so if you've already got a, a WAS version 8 system running you can actually install on that so there's a couple of options to actually update the web WAS system and then to install wizard on it um, you can also do various other things like install uh, gives you instructions on installing studio the client installation and some database scripts but all we want to do is just install the, a full brand new WSRR installation so we will choose the custom installation button at the top once we get there um, we get a little screen that asks us whether we want to install as administrative user it's usually quite good to install um, using that and once you've done that just then click on install that, that should then start the installation process should start kicking off installation manager um, if your installation manager isn't up to the right level uh, which it should be if it's because it's picking up off in the installation media um, it will actually ask you to uh, update to the latest level but here it should should pick up the right version and it will start installation manager this may take a few seconds to actually start the workbench once installation manager has started um, it shows you the packages it's going to install and on this screen you just need to click the next button and it will start preparing and start installing those uh, or doing some checking on those those packages validating the package you need to accept the license agreement just by clicking on the accept I accept, I accept the terms of the license agreement and then clicking next you then need to select where you want to install the uh, the WSRR installation system installation so that's WAS and WSRR so in this case I'm just going to call my put money in WSRR 8002 uh, I've already got a directory called that so I'm going to go um, just call it 8002 that's because I've not put a slash at the front there we go so I'm going to create a new package group for all of this system in the wizard 8002 underscore 2 directory on my C drive. So if I click next, select the language, in this case I've only got English. Um, again, that shows you all the packages that are going to be install, installed. You can see the, the various things that are going to be installed as part of WAS, so you can actually increase those and add different things on if you want to uh, install that. But we'll just take the defaults for that and then click next. It shows you the available disk space um, and, and how much it's going to either download and then how much it's going to install so you need to just check that you've got enough space to actually install all of that on and then once you've confirmed that it's all okay then just click install and that will start downloading um, the available files that it needs off the internet and then it starts installing the WSRR and WAS installation the WAS and WSRR installation so in this case this may take quite a while so what I'll do is I'll just pause the video and then resume it once it's finished completing the download and installation of WAS and WSRR have now been completed and when it has you will see this screen if everything went fine uh, saying that all the packages are installed 
if there were some errors then you'd need to go and look at the errors and resolve any of the issues caused by that. The next thing we need to do is although it's been installed we haven't created a WAS profile for our WSRR system to run in so we need to go to the profile management tool to go and create a profile. So we can select the profile management tool option here and then click finish. That will then go and start the, um, the profile management tool so we can go and create a profile. That has now started um, and here you can see we were in the profile management tool and there were no profiles created at all so we need to go to the, to the create button, click create. There are several options you can choose from. Um, we're really interested in the web service registry and repository section um, and you can choose whether you want to do a service registry deployment manager or a custom profile which is probably adding a, a new node to your deployment manager installation. Uh, for us, I'm going to just choose a standalone service registry. So it's just going to be a single WSRR, a single WSRR system or a single WAS profile running in my, uh, my WAS. So I select that and click Next. And then you just need to follow all of the instructions, all of the um, fill in all the fields for any of the, the forms that are showing next. So normally you can do a, a typical profile creation, but just to show you all of the different options that you can choose, in this instance I'm going to choose the advanced profile creation. It just allows you to specify and configure more things, um, whereas the typical profile creation will actually have some defaults for you. So just click on that. Here you can specify the profile name that you want to uh, to have your WSRR and WAS installed in and the directory it's going to be installed in. So it's under, um, here's the default is WSRR SRV01. I'm, I'm just going to leave it as that. I'm not going to select a template. I'm just going to leave it as those. I'm going to click Next. Normally I'll leave the defaults um, as my node name and the server name and things, but you can change those if you want to and then click Next. I'm going to enable administrative security. It's a lot easier to um, install and configure WSRR with admin security enabled and then to disable it afterwards if you don't really want it because trying to install WSRR with security disabled and then trying to enable it afterwards is uh, there's a few more quite a few more steps that you need to go to to actually set up all the passwords and things but here I'm just going to start off saying admin security is enabled so I'm just going to call give it a user ID that I'm going to use and a password was admin and then my password and then select next um, it's going to create a new default personal certificates for an assigning certificate. So I'm just going to leave those blank. But if you did have your own, then you can specify those certificates in there. Um, I'm going to leave the security certificate for part two exactly the same. So it's just going to have specify where the trust store and key store and things are and the passwords for those. Then it shows you all the different port values that are going to be assigned as it normally does when you install WAS and things. Again, I've already got some. Um, WAS installations on my machine, so it's selected some relevant ports. So the sort of basic ports are 9082 in this case, and 9445 for the secure one. Um, so that normally, I just leave those blank and then click not blank, but as defaults, and then click next. I don't like running the service in this case as a Windows service. Um, if you're running on a Linux or um, Unix system, then you probably won't have this option. So I'm just going to disable that anyway even though I'm running on Windows. I'm not going to create a web server plat definition um, to, to front-end this, this uh, WAS and WSRR system, so I'm just going to uncheck that box and then click Next. Now this is where you set up all your database information. Uh, in this instance I've got a, um, a local database, so the database is actually on the same machine, so I'm just going to specify that, and in this case I'm, I'm running uh, DB2, so I can select DB2 data server. There are various options for Oracle and um, an SQL server, but I'm just going to choose DB2 data server. I'm not going to override the, the destination directory for generated scripts. I'll just leave that as default. and I'm going to put in the name of the database that I want. 
um, I'm just going to call it X2 because I've already got a DB2, it was a DB database. So you need to select all of those for the different databases. And as I'm actually running on the same on a local system, I want to create the new database and configure the tables in it as part of the install. If you're running on uh, have a remote database, then you probably only want to generate the database scripts and execute those manually after the profile has been created and you'd select that bottom option. Um, you can also configure the database tables in an existing database. So if you've already got a single database that you want to install on, you can actually just use that and just create the database, the tables in there. So it won't do the create database, it will just use that existing one. But I'm going to create a new database and select next. Then you need to provide the information about the database. So here it's the name that you want to authenticate with the database. And in my case, I'm just going to use the, the, the DB2 admin password. Um, and enter that. Um, then it, you need to specify some schemas for the business space system, uh, the local directory of the JDBC drivers for your database that you've got. Um, and then you need to enter the system administrator username. And in this case, it's DB2 admin again. So I've specified those. There's no errors uh, on the page. If, if I do specify something wrong, um, then you'll see like the database passwords do not match. But in this case, um, that's all fine. So you then click Next. Then you need to specify the um, schema for the um, for the WSRR system. I'm just going to leave that as WSRR. And then the next page it says the schema for the activity logging. I'll leave that as it is. And then the schema for the SI bus. And just leave that as default. As we specified security, it's going to ask us for the JMS user ID configuration. I'm just going to leave that as the defaults, which is the same as the uh, the WAS um, admin defaults that we set. And then the same for the run as user ID configuration. Leave those as the same. The role configurations, you can specify the different roles in here, but for this I'm just going to say everybody's authenticated uh, for everything and just leave that as default. And then it shows you, the last page will show you uh, the summary of everything that's going to be, be set up. And once you've done that, click Create, and that will start going off creating that profile for you. Again, this takes a few seconds or a few minutes to actually run, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I will pause the... Um, the video until that's actually done and then we'll come back after that. The profile has now been successfully created as you can see by the error message at the top and what we can now do is launch the first steps console. If you had a remote um, database then you'd need to go and run the scripts to create the database tables and then the database itself and then once you've done that, you can then start up your WSRR system and uh, hopefully everything should be fine. But I'm just going to, as everything was installed, so the, the WAS is installed, the WSRR is, is now installed with the profile and created the database, everything should be ready to go. So if I just start the first steps profile, I can close down the profile creation tool. And you can see I have various profile actions that I can do. I can inst verify the installation, and that just runs some scripts and starts the server just to make sure everything's running, or I can start the server itself. So I'm going to skip um, the installation verification and just start the server. So if I click here, it starts up a window and starts running the commands. So it's going to give me an error saying... Uh, Ignore that. It's running it securely, but so it's actually asking me if it's if, if the pop-up can I allow blocked content. So I'm just saying yes for that. And this is just the log that is showing what uh, what is happening within the uh, the process when it starts up. So it's just just the actual normal start server process that's being being run here. And that will take a few seconds to to start the server. 
as you can see the server has now been started and is open for business so we can close down the uh, status window and you can actually see that there are several options uh, additional options available on the first steps console and they are now to do with profile so we can actually load the governance enablement profile and in my case I'm going to do that now so I'll load the governance enablement profile uh, I've got a problem with my script on my server on my thing but that's fine just click yes on those hopefully um, because I've got security enabled it's asking me to um, enter my security details so it's because it's actually using the WS admin command to um, to connect through to the WSRR system running on WAS. So that's starting those up, and that's going to load the governance enablement profile and activate it on my WSRR system. Again, this may take a few seconds to do. So while it's doing that, I'll move the screen to the side. Um, other things you can see on the first steps is although you can load the profile, you can stop the server, start the admin, the WAS admin console, or you can actually then start up the WSRR web UI or the WSRR business space UI. Um, so once the profile has been loaded, I'll start up the web UI and the business space UI so you can see both of those. seems to be taking a little while for this so I'll just pause this again. The profile has now been loaded so I'll just start up the WSRR web UI so we can see uh, that everything's on on the system. So I'll just get the certificate for this. And here we can see the UI. I log in with my user ID. Then we can see we have our profile here. Everything's loaded. Um, I can switch to the configuration profile or configuration perspective and show that the configuration profile has been loaded and activated. So here we have the governance and element profile go back to the administrator window you can see all of the the basic WSRR U web UI for that so that concludes the installation of WSRR and WAS8 WAS8 and WSRI8 on this system